In the folks, welcome to this video, and here I'm going to be talking about the WTCR finale in Sepang, where Norby Michelis won his first title after Esteban Guerrero had to retire with overheating issues. It's also a race won by Johan Christofferson, who started in P22. And the 14 lap race at night was honestly something that was quite astounding. It was something that I really enjoyed, it was something that I thought was pretty cool to sit down and watch. Um, as somebody whose main kind of tin top viewing is usually the BTCC, and that usually can be quite balanced, it was really wonderful to see the kind of racing that you get in the WTCR. I've not really watched much of the WTCR, I didn't really watch much of the WTCC either. Um, I think this is probably the first one of either that I've watched in, in full live. And honestly, I'm glad I did. Um, it was hard to find it at first. I watched it on motorsport.tv in the end. But when I sat down and watched it, I was like, yeah, this is really cool. The TCR formula has been one that's quite interested me because it's one that promises a bit more kind of balance um, between all of the competitors. And... I mean, that's just something the touring car has generally. It, it tends to have a lot more balance. You don't tend to have the one OP team that's sweeping everything. I mean, if you look at who won um, the different titles, you had Hyundai, who, of course, did win last year as well with Gabriella Tarquini. But you also had Cyan Race and Lincoln Co. win the um, Teams Championship. And that's in their first year at WTCR together. Of course, there were other kinds of dramas, such as Nicky Katzberg getting excluded from the race meeting due to a collision with uh, Ivan Muller in the uh, race beforehand. So, in the second of three races at Sepang. But it was a really good final race to sit down and watch. And to see four cars all battling for it right up at the front in the heat of it. It's something you don't really get when you're watching stuff like Formula 1. And it's one of the reasons why I like uh, these sorts of racing as well. They're not as expensive. They're usually not as flashy as Formula 1. But there's usually much closer racing. And it can be to the point that you see four people basically running in tandem down the home straight in Zapang. And I really look forward to seeing what will happen over the course of the off-season, even as somebody who's been largely viewing WTCR from afar. Because with the Volkswagen Auto Group largely um, leaving things like WTCR, Audi and Volkswagen looking at ending their support in the series as, um, for example, VW Motorsport looks to move away from really any kind of non-electric motorsport. Um, I'll probably talk about that in another video sometime. You saw Johan Kershafferson win in a Volkswagen from 22nd on the grid. I mean, Kershafferson's been doing really well anyway, um, and in a variety of disciplines this season. But it was also really fun to sit down and watch that happen. So yeah, those are my thoughts on uh, WTCR at Sepang. Uh, if you have any of your own, and leave them in the comments below. Of course, like I said, I've not been very well informed on this. It's almost as a kind of outside observer. But I hope you enjoyed some of my insights. I'm sorry that I'm a bit more slow paced than usual and a bit deeper than usual. I am actually quite ill at the moment. But I hope you'll stick around. I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye for now.